Hello, my name is Adam Marais, and I'm going to take you through uh, the levels that I designed for Attack and Power Juju. Two levels I was assigned for this game were the snowboarding and sandboarding levels. And uh, this is an interesting challenge because uh, Avalanche had developed uh, a prototype for a snowboarding game, but that had been a much more serious and realistic game, and this was obviously a uh, platformer uh, children's game that we were designing and thus there had to be some uh, tweaks to the basic physics. The programmers took uh, the basic physics and engine that they had used for the prototype snowboarding game and uh, put those directly into uh, this level for Juju. Uh, it was pretty evident early on that that wasn't going to work and that those uh, realistic physics were not going to be fun uh, and interesting for the player, um, for our target audience. So, we did a lot of R&D for these levels. In fact, most of our time, uh, I would say about 60% oh, of our time was spent on R&D, trying to get these levels just to feel perfect. So the right feel of snowboarding to be fun and engaging uh, for the kids playing the game. Easy enough for them to play, but also challenging and fun, and, and really just an enjoyable experience. Uh, <clears throat> Early on, there was a, a bit of a tug of war between uh, myself and uh, the programmer assigned the level because he was really wanting to stick with uh, the physics that they had previously and the realism of snowboarding, where my goal was much more just to create a, a fun level. Eventually, uh, through, a, through a lot of talking, I was able to get the attributes of the physics engine for the snowboarding under my control. He gave me a, you know, a set of tools that I could change the gravity, change the speed, uh, change those parameters. And through a lot of trial and error, I was able to find what I believe was the right metric um, to create some fun levels. I wanted it to be smooth and easy uh, for the players to understand how to do it immediately, to have a very, very uh, short uh, learning curve. They could immediately get in and engage and just really have fun with these levels. Uh, we had a couple of different ways um, to make it exciting for them, a uh, trick score and a speed getting to the bottom, but really, really all about uh, the enjoyment. Uh, only after we had figured out uh, the right feel of the game did then we get into sort of designing the level, making them long enough uh, so that the players would have enough fun and creating some interesting things like multi-level uh, gameplay that we had in snowboarding levels with those higher plateaus that ki uh, kids could jump onto. Uh, and then in the sand sandboarding level, of course, uh, and you can't really see it at this point in the level, but later on when you get down into the ruins, um, we had a lot of fun designing those and making it interesting for the player. Uh, a couple of other fun things that we did was we added those uh, effects there to show uh, where rail sliding could occur so that we could rail slide and those ice fragments you saw earlier and these sand dunes. And really in the end, I think we ended up with some, some great levels. Uh, I had some anecdotal evidence that uh, these were some of the levels that the kids would come back to to play again and again. And uh, that meant a lot to me when I heard those stories. So this was the snowboarding and sandboarding levels in Attack of the Power Juju and uh, thank you for watching.